guys, and welcome back to Bake In, Season 2. I have not been able to travel as much as I'd planned to, which sucks. So I thought, why not travel through food? With the help of some of my friends and family, I'm going to be baking up some incredible recipes that are inspired by the world's most famous flavors. And today, I'm going to be going to... India! Oh, I got it wrong. <laughs> this is always hard. Ah, I got it! India! Yay! So I'll be taking inspiration from India's most famous drink, the mango lassi. And who better to ask for advice than the world's leading expert, my mum, Geeta Maini, the masala queen. Let's chat. Hey mum. Hey Tara. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me on board. Yeah, of course. Lovely to share from across the pond. I'm going to be making some donuts, which we both love, but I'm going to infuse them with the flavors of one of our favorite drinks, the mango lassi, which you know so much about. But I need some help and some advice first, so I've got a few questions for you. The first one is pretty basic. What is a mango lassi, mum? I always like going back to the historic aspect of any food product that we have. So lassi dates back to about a thousand BC. It's quite old. So I think it originated from Persia and when they invaded India came in from the north. They brought their drink called Duke. Now it's become very popular in every household. So there's savory lassi and then there's sweet lassi. Yeah. So where did the mango aspect come in then? In Gujarat they have something called ras, which is made from mango pulp. So okay. what they do is when it's the mango season, they will extract the, the pulp and make a juice out of it. Mm -hmm. It's quite thick. So they have that with their meals. Every okay. meal has a ras. So I guess, you know, the modern flair, the modern twist to it was why can we not make a lassi with it? What are the most important things in a mango lassi, like in the recipe, the ingredients? So you have to look for good thick yogurt, okay. look for a good pulp, mango pulp, cardamom, some mm. will put saffron in it, uh, and okay. basically you're looking for the richness in the initial basic product. Okay, so what I'm thinking to do with the flavors of the mango lassi then is I'm going to make a yogurt based pastry cream so I get that tanginess and tartness from the yogurt and then I'm going to make a mango curd so I really get that mango flavor and both of those are going to go in the donut to which I'm going to infuse with cardamom because you know how much I love cardamom and then the whole thing is going to be encased in the cardamom sugar for a little bit of glistening and some pistachios on top. Oh, that's yum. Sounds yeah. really delicious. Well, wish me luck. Oh, Maybe no, we'll make I'll, some when I'll I come home. Some, I'll be share the recipe with me. Maybe. Sounds good. You take care. Okay. Bye. All the best. Bye. See ya. All right, so my mom gave me some really nice tips and tricks. Let's get started. You will need yogurt, sugar, butter, egg yolks, salt, corn flour. First thing we're going to make is the yogurt pastry cream. So in a pot, I'm going to add sugar. And then we're going to add the corn flour or corn starch, a little bit of salt, and I'm going to whisk that together first. And my pan is not on any heat right now. I just want to make sure I get all the ingredients combined first. So now, oh, got corn flour, sugar, flour, whatever. So now that it's all combined, I'm going to add the wet ingredients. So we've got some plain natural yogurt here. And this is basically replacing the milk that normally goes in a pastry cream. And what it'll do is give us that lovely tang that we love in a mango lassi. And then I've got egg yolks, and the egg yolks are gonna help thicken the pastry cream and get it really nice and creamy. And last but not least, butter. My favorite ingredient, as you guys know. Perfect. So this is a really easy pastry cream. It's one pot, that's it. Just keep stirring it. So I'm gonna turn the heat on now to a medium. I'm just gonna whisk that all together. Oh, oh my. You should know from season one, I just make a mess all the time. This is just what I do, but I always clean up after myself. And I'm always on my tippy toes when I'm cooking, so get used to that. So I'm looking to combine everything so it's really nice and smooth. And once it starts to come to a simmer is when we know it's really cooked through. And just keep whisking it because you don't want it to stick on the bottom. So I've loved donuts, I think, ever since I was a little kid in Canada. We have this infamous place called Tim Hortons. So it was always a treat to get a donut from Tim Hortons when you were a kid or even the Timbits. I absolutely love Timbits still to this day. I get a 10 pack whenever I go home. Okay, 20 pack, I'm not lying. But ever since I've had those, I've always been amazed at how to make donuts and how to fill them up and all that kind of stuff. All right guys, so it's starting to thicken beautifully now. Look at that, super silky smooth. So we're gonna take this off the heat now. So this is just a metal tray that I'm gonna transfer this pastry cream to. I'm just gonna spread it around because I want it to cool quite quickly and chill so it thickens up. Perfect, and then some cling film. 
and put it right on top of the surface of the pastry cream so that it doesn't form a skin when it is cooling. And it will be hot, so just be careful. And there we go. So now I've got this ready. I'm just gonna set it aside until it cools completely and then I'm gonna put it into the fridge for about an hour to two hours until it's really nice and chilled. So let's go to the fridge. You will need mango, butter, lime juice, sugar, salt, egg yolks. Mango! So I'm gonna make the mango curd now. So I'm gonna start with a blender. I've got some mango here that I've just cubed and some sugar, lime juice, and a pinch of salt just to help bring out that sweetness of the mango. And then I'm gonna blend this up. All right, nice and smooth. So now to this, I'm gonna add seven egg yolks and I'm using really nice golden yellow egg yolks because again, I wanna maintain that really nice orange color that you get from mangoes. Okay, and give that a whiz. And that's it. So I decided to do it in a blender because it's a lot easier, a lot quicker. Mango can be very pulpy and stringy, so you really wanna blend it to get all that stringiness smooth. And now what we're gonna do even is sieve it to get even more of those stringy pulp bits out so that we have a really smooth curd. So I've got my mixture here, I'm just gonna pour it into the sieve, which is over the pan that I'm gonna cook the curd in, So I don't wanna do too many dishes, you know? One blender, one pot, and obviously all those bowls that I had all the ingredients in. <laughs> all right, so I'm just going to use a whisk and as you can see, it's already started to come out, but this will help push it out a little bit faster. This color is beautiful and just what I was looking for. I see somebody beatbox. And I got like a full thing here. All right, so that is pretty much all sieved. I'm just gonna scrape the bottom. Make sure you get all of that lovely mango egg mixture. And again, guys, just taste your mangoes so you know how sweet they are because that will also depend on how much sugar you use, but my mangoes are sweet, so I didn't add too much sugar. And just a little bit of lime juice for a bit of acidity. Where do I put this guy? And stay there. So it's really nice and smooth, not stringy, not pulpy by any means. It's going to make a beautiful curd and a really nice orange color that I love. So now we just need to cook it. On a low heat, I'm just gonna whisk this to cook, and the reason I'm doing it on a low heat is because it's got quite a bit of egg yolk in there and I don't want that to scramble. So just keep whisking again, just like we did with the pastry cream, just to combine it so that it all cooks evenly and doesn't get stuck on the bottom either. So it's starting to thicken nicely and I've got a few bubbles that are popping around and that's the egg yolks that are cooking and thickening with the sugars and getting really nice and silky. I feel like my hips do a dance when I whisk. It's just like everything moves except for my actual like the salsa bit. Chicken. <laughs> All right, so it's thick. Can you guys see this? It's thickened beautifully. I'm gonna take it off the heat, and now we're gonna whisk in some cubed butter here. So just one piece at a time until it's nice and incorporated because I don't want the butter to split when it's being added to this because it is a different temperature. So just add it one at a time. And we're almost done, guys. Just the butter, and then we're done whisking for now. And just the last bit of butter, last one. And you guys can see it's really started to change the color. It's lightened up a little bit. Got really nice glossy, silky curd streaks through. It's beautiful. Butter is in. It's gonna give this a quick taste. Oh, it smells delicious. Mm. Sorry, it's a bubble in my mouth. So now that it's whisked, I'm just gonna add this to a pan like I did the other one. So we'll need for this one to cool for just about the same amount of time as the pastry cream is, so just a couple of hours for it to set. And the reason I'm putting them in metal tins to cool down is so that they cool down faster and glass actually holds heat a lot more, so don't put them in a glass dish. Cling film again. And again, right on the surface of the curd. And that's it guys. It's ready to chill now. I'm gonna let it sit at room temperature until it's fully cooled before I add it into the fridge and then let it chill for about an hour to two hours until it's nice and thick. You will need flour, milk, eggs, vanilla, fresh ground cardamom, salt, yeast, butter, sugar. My milk is just a little bit too hot. <laughs> We're gonna have to wait now. Wait. <gasps> I want a cookie. 
<laughs> no, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't grumble. I am always hungry. Right now, my hunger for pang is real. And it's dough time. Finally time to make the donut dough, which I love. We're gonna start off with some warm milk, which is just kind of at body temperature. If it's too hot, you can kill the yeast. If it's too cold, the yeast won't bloom. And then to that, we're gonna add some sugar and of course, the yeast. And then just give that a nice little whisk to combine it. And the sugar is what's gonna feed the yeast so that it can eat and get really nice and fluffy. You guys have seen me do this before with dough. There we go. Now I'm just gonna let that sit for about five minutes or so until it gets really nice and frothy and bubbly on top. And now we wait, patiently. So typically I'd be prepping the rest of my ingredients, but I'm already prepped. And organized. So I'm just gonna take this time as a breather in between making donuts and just watch the glorious yeast feed on the sugar and froth and bubble away. What's the history of a donut? Hanson Gregory, an American, claimed to have invented the ring-shaped donut in 1847 aboard a lime trading ship when he was 16 years old. A century and a half after 15-year-old Hanson Crockett Gregory of Clam Cove, Maine, punched a hole in what he called greasy sinkers, we are scarfing down donuts. I'm so gonna call them greasy sinkers, but these ones don't have holes in them, so. Yeast is good, it is nice and frothy on top. We're gonna move on and add our eggs into it. So I've got three large eggs here and a little bit of vanilla, because I love the flavor of vanilla and donuts. And then just give them a whisk to combine. Now I'm going to add all the flour in at once, a little bit of salt. Always put salt in your baked goods. It helps bring out that sweetness and kind of balance everything out. And the lovely fresh ground cardamom. Just love, I put it on everything, in everything, it's just perfect. And then I'm gonna switch to a really big spatula. <laughs> I'm gonna mix this all together to combine into a nice soft dough. And you guys can see, I haven't put any oil or butter into this dough yet, so there's no other fat other than the egg yolks from the eggs. But what we're gonna do is, once it's all combined into a dough, we're gonna add butter to it after. Once the dough is formed, the gluten has started to form, so the butter spreads evenly and attaches to the gluten strands better rather than clumping up and you get a nice, fluffy, soft dough. Okay, so I've got this sticky dough made and I'm gonna sprinkle some flour down all over my surface. And I'm doing it from a height because I don't want it to be too thick of a layer. And then we're gonna dump this bad boy out onto the surface, if I can lift it. Excellent, just like that. So I'm just gonna knead this a little bit more using the palms of my hands. It's gonna be a really soft and sticky dough. I'm gonna flour them. I just wanted to get that in my hands. All right, so I've just been kneading this till it gets nice and smooth and incorporated. What I'm gonna do now is add the softened butter, which is at room temperature. And this looks like it's gonna be a mess, but it works. And make sure you have a bench scraper, or something on the side, so you can just pick it all up and combine it together. Just use your arms, use the heels of your palm, push out the dough. It's gonna sound quite interesting. Just make sure you keep scraping up so you don't lose any of that butter or mix. Got the dough nice and combined here. As you can see, it is still quite a bit sticky, but that's okay. It's gonna get nice and risen when it rests. So what we're gonna do now is transfer it to a greased bowl, which I've got here. I'll just grease mine with some butter. You can use oil, shortening, whatever you feel. And just plop this guy right in there. Ah, it's all stuck to me. And then we just need some cling film. Just up here. And just cover the bowl and put it in a nice and warm place so that it doubles in size. And then we'll know that the donut dough is ready and then we'll punch it down and have some fun. So, see you in a bit. All right, my dough has really doubled in size. It's nicely risen. Take off that cling film. Smell that yeasty goodness. Ah. I missed. Time for the fun part. We're gonna punch it down. Amazing. I'm gonna take it over. And now I'm gonna put it onto a floured surface. I'm just gonna pat it out. What I wanna do is measure it into 70 gram balls, get some dough. And I like to use scissors because that way it doesn't really pull the dough. Just easier to use scissors. Double-edged sword, right? Double-edged sword. 
Hey, 64 on my first one. A couple grams here and there, not such a big deal. And there we go, I've got a nice dough ball here. So I'm just gonna show you guys how to form it. So we're gonna flatten it all like this, fold it all into the middle, pinch it to seal it, and then just roll it into a nice tout ball. And this does take a little bit of practice, but I know you guys can do it. And that's how you make these 70 gram dough balls, quite easy. I'm gonna continue doing that with the rest of the dough into 70 gram balls. Then I'm gonna transfer them all to a floured and lined sheet tray, cover them with a tea towel, and then let them rise in a warm place, just like the dough did, until they have doubled in size, and then they'll be ready to fry. <sighs> what do you guys have planned? <laughs> All right, so everything's going quite well. We're ready, we just need to fry the dough. So I have got the oil on and now I'm just having a cup of tea to relax. Ah! <laughs> yeah, gentle, yeah? Okay, is this a love letter? Oh, it's so sticky. Prove yourself quiz, <laughs> proof or proof? <laughs> proof myself, ah, dope, I get it, cute. What? Which country invented shampoo? This has nothing to do with donuts or India. Italy. <laughs> India. Obviously, these are all gonna be Indian questions. Duh, Tara. Don't Stop Me Now is from which famous Indian descent singer? Michael Jackson. <laughs> Guys, I feel really like silly. Oh! Yeah, man, that was a great movie. What popular British board game was actually invented in India? British people have their own board games? Monopoly? <laughs> Snakes and ladders. Snakes and ladders! Snakes! In Britain, curry is the most popular type of food to cook at home. True. Man, Brits love a curry, a kaza. They want to go to the curry house all the time. They just love it. Everyone wants a curry here. Anyways, I did really well. Yeah! All right, so the donuts have risen. Look at these beautiful guys, girls, whatever you want to call them. Looking really nice, very light and airy, nicely doubled in size. And now all that we need to do is fry them. So I'm going to take one very gently, transfer it to a slotted spoon that I'm going to put into the hot oil, heat it to 180 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to fry three at a time just so that they have room to move around in the oil and they won't touch each other. And you just want to be quite gentle with them and let them just do their thing in the oil. Nice, nice. So they'll start to sizzle and then the sizzling will stop. And then we're gonna flip them once they get a really nice golden brown underneath. And then we're gonna have a nice ring of white hopefully in the center and that's when I'll know that they're cooked perfectly. Oh, look at that. Perfectly golden brown. Absolutely awesome. I'm very happy with this so far. So nice when donuts work out. I feel like a little kid, so excited for my treat at the end of the day. Donut, is there a donut song? Oh, I love donuts. Cream filled donuts. Mango let's see donuts. Donuts. So I'm just gonna check to see that my oil is still staying at 180 degrees. If it's too cold, they're just gonna become really greasy donuts and that's not what we want. Nobody really wants a greasy sinker, as they used to call them. They want nice, fluffy, airy donuts. I'm gonna take my first one out. And as you guys can see, they've got a nice little ring of white in the middle. And I'm gonna take them to put, to drain, take them to put, I'm gonna put them in a paper towel lined colander so they can drain some of their oil. And then I'm gonna put the next batch in. So while the second batch is frying, I'm gonna make a sugar coating that we're gonna to toss the warm donuts in. Granulated sugar here, and add about a tablespoon of ground fresh cardamom. So that's that all mixed. So now I'm gonna take one of those lovely donuts and I'm just gonna to toss it in the sugar. Oh, these are gonna be so nice. All right, and there we go. We've got a nice sugared covered donut. All right, so now I'm just gonna finish up with the rest of my donuts. Cover them in this beautiful aromatic cardamom sugar, and then we're gonna fill them with that yogurt pastry cream and the mango curd. Can't wait. All right, guys, donuts are done. They are fried, golden brown, delicious. They've got the really nice beige belt in the center, and they're covered in our lovely cardamom sugar as well. So now all that's left to do is fill them. What I did with the lovely yogurt pastry cream that I made earlier was I folded in some whipped cream into it. And what that does is it lightens the filling so it's not too dense because this beautiful orange mango curd over here is a little bit more dense so I wanted to kind of balance out inside the donut. That's it, look at the colors, aren't they nice? It's exactly what I was looking for. Awesome, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a sharp knife, cut a slit in the middle so we can fill them with our beautiful fillings. These are so light and airy, they're beautiful. Am I saying beautiful a lot? Because they are. And you don't wanna cut a slit that's too big, just big enough so the piping tips will fit inside. Excellent. So now I'm gonna go in first with the lovely yogurt pastry cream. 
Nothing's coming out. Technical difficulties. Do you have Oh, it's got icing in it. Technical difficulties fixed. What am I doing now? And we're just gonna go straight in there and pipe it. And the reason I'm going in with the pastry cream first is because it's a bit of a creamier filling, it's a bit lighter, so I'd want it to not be such a heavy donut. And what the mango one is gonna do is, as I said earlier, just accent it beautifully. All right, now I'm gonna go in with the beautiful, delicious, bright orange mango curd. And it will start to pop out because they're putting quite a bit of filling in these guys. And I've kept the mixtures separate rather than putting them in together or mixing them together because when you bite it, I want you to be able to get the flavor of yogurt separately and then the flavor of mango really strongly as well. So I find that if you're having them mixed together, the yogurt cream might just mask the mango flavor way too much and be a bit overpowering. So now that they are filled, last but not least, we're gonna sprinkle them with a little bit of chopped pistachio. And I have a mango lassi, I just love that little bit of pistachio that my mom used to put on top and serve with it for a nice little crunch. And here they are guys, the mango lassi donuts, light and airy donuts covered in a cardamom sugar, filled with a beautiful yogurt pastry cream and a delicious mango curd, topped with some pistachios and ready to get into my belly. So let's take a bite. Oh yeah, I've been waiting for this. Mmm. It's all over my mouth. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm sorry. I'm covered in sugar, I'm like a little kid right now. What's nice inside is that it's kind of mixed up, but you can still see the separation of the cream and the mango lassi. The donuts are super light and airy. It's not dense, it's not heavy at all. I'm gonna take another bite. Mmm. feel really like sandy. Is this what guys feel like with beards? Like, you know how they have rough skin? Thanks for tuning in. This has been Bake In Season 2. This is the first episode, and I hope you guys are as excited for the next few as I am. This one was a lot of fun. We visited India with a mango lassi and made some delicious donuts. If you guys want to know where we're heading to next and you love baking, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Bake In Season 2. I'm Tara and today we went to <laughs> going to India to make donuts. <laughs> Put it in there. It's not a big bite. I take a bigger bite than that. This is really nice. Is it good? This is really nice. Tastes like mango? The mango bangs. The mango it's good, bangs. isn't it? Thanks again for watching another episode of Bake In. If you guys like baking just as much as I do, please make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss another episode. See you later. <laughs> don't say that. See you later, guys. <laughs>